Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Had to wait for everyone to get in place. <laughs> so welcome to our, our worship celebration this morning. So we move through Pentecost and uh, just a, a delight to be able to gather together and worship together. And uh, that's what it's all about. So tomorrow, um, tomorrow is DYC. So this is a, a new thing for the summer. And so this is the first first one. There'll be another one in July. But uh, the schedule of events is in the bulletin. And it's also in the messenger, which you received last month. But it's here in the bulletin. Uh, lunch is at noon. So, you know, so you have to get here for lunch. Okay? I mean, so it's not... It's not the real easy thing of hanging out after worship and going to DYC. You got to be on track, okay? Lunch at noon, one o'clock devotion of Bible study, two o'clock worship, and two thirty volleyball in the park. So that's the plan. Um, a couple of things for Thursday is uh, happy birthday to Hannah Rose McCoon and happy anniversary to Dan and Patty Schmelzer. And just a reminder, the new portals of prayer are available for July, for the next quarter. They're on the back uh, table. So you can grab those and have them in advance instead of later, which sometimes happens. Uh, coming events, a couple of great things. Sugar Pine Summer Camp uh, is coming up the end of July, but we need registrations, so we are limited. We have five who have signed up and paid, so we need to get those registrations in. And uh, we only have room for six more, so that's our, we're, we've got a cap. We can't have over the 11. Um, the theme is finding your direction and uh, uh, we're going to be meeting with another group that's going to be there. So we'll have 15, they'll have 15 and uh, so we're going to do things together and as far as our worship is concerned, right? Okay. So instead of being outside at the fire pit, we may be inside in the chapel, which we're used to. So anyway, things are still working their way. Um, permission forms are available on the back if, uh, if you uh, still need those. And then there's a clipboard in the back for sign up for who we are. That uh, starts in July, the end of July, and uh, it'll be nine o'clock in the morning on Sunday morning in, in the Koinonia Center. We'll have refreshments and uh, just a, a reminder of who we are, uh, our roots, where we came from, where we are today, how we got where we are today. And, uh, and then uh, we'll talk about some catechism stuff. So. Anyway, so that's the, the plan. Be sure to sign up so we can uh, plan on that accordingly. So, with that, again, welcome. <laughs>
And that's what we want to do this morning is to recognize our graduates. So as I call you, I'll ask you to come forward and, and remain standing up here. Rosie.
know, we practiced that thing Thursday, we practiced that thing this morning. It was not coming together. And you know what? Do you feel that way sometimes with your life? It's like, I did my homework, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. It is not coming together. You know what? Think back and remember this song. Fight through it. Keep going. Keep trying to pull your team around you and together. And God will bring you the victory. Perseverance brings patience. Yeah. And, and that's what the Holy Spirit does, too. Yes, amen. The Holy Spirit, remember when we don't know how to pray, the Holy Spirit, just, He yes. lifts our groanings, yes. our groanings before the Lord. So, yes. there you go. Believe me, when it goes wrong, I groan. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's profess our faith. In the words of the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God. Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits on the right hand of God the Father. It shall be so for you. 
but if not, it shall not be so. And as they were going along and talking, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and the horses of fire, which separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind to heaven. <clears throat> Elisha saw it and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. And he saw Elijah no more. Our next lesson is in the New Testament. It's written in 2 Peter, the first chapter, beginning with the 16th verse.
scripture, a cloud most often is the symbol, the awesome presence and glory of God. We saw that several weeks ago when the Lord invited Moses to join him at the top of Mount Sinai. And if you recall, as the children of Israel camped at the base of the mountain, there was thunder and lightning flashes. The thick cloud that just came upon the mountain and God was in the cloud. As Moses went up the mountain to receive the second set of tablets, when Moses watched the glory of God passing by, he came down from that mountain and his face was so bright, so radiant, that he had to cover his face with a veil. The glory of the Lord filled the Holy of Holies when the tabernacle was completed. The Holy of Holies, when the temple had been built in Jerusalem. The term used to describe this glory, the very presence of God, is Shekinah. It's a word we don't find directly in Scripture. It's one of those words like Trinity or rapture. We don't find it, but the principle is there. It's a term used to describe the presence of God, particularly in the Old Testament. Presence of God in a cloud. About 400 miles north of Mount Sinai, we find another mountain, Mount Carmel. It was here during the time of the divided kingdom that the prophet Elijah confronted the king of the northern kingdom, the kingdom of Israel. That king was Ahab. And Elijah predicted predicted a drought. It was on that mountain, on Mount Carmel, that Elijah called down fire from heaven. And it was in a contest to prove whether or not the Lord was God, the Lord was Yahweh. He stood alone against the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400, and 400 prophets of Asherah as they called out to their gods and fire, and they, they called out to have them send fire from heaven to ignite the altar sacrifice that they had prepared. And they prayed all day. They prayed into the, the middle of the afternoon. And nothing, nothing happened. But when Elijah prayed once, Fire not only came down from heaven, it consumed the sacrifice, the wood, the stones of the altar that Elijah had built, and even, even the water in the trough around the altar that had been dug. And immediately after having all of the false prophets killed in the Kishon Valley, Elijah ascended Mount Carmel again instructed his servant to look out, to look out over toward the Mediterranean Sea, report what he saw. Seven times this instruction was given. Six times the servant reported seeing absolutely nothing. But the seventh time, Servant reported seeing a cloud as small as a man's hand, and it was coming up out of the sea. Elijah then sent his first servant to tell King Ahab, in essence, he better head for shelter. Because now, finally, it's gonna rain. 
and it did rain. It poured. First, God was in the fire on that mountain. And then, he was in the cloud. He was in both places for his faithful people. And what we read in the 19th chapter of 1 Kings always amazes me. When Ahab told his wife, the hated Queen Jezebel, all that Elijah had done, she threatened to kill Elijah. Just remember all that Elijah had done. All that had been accomplished on that mountain. And what did Elijah do? He ran in fear. He ran all the way to the south, to the mountain of Moses, known today as Jebel Musa, to Mount Sinai, Mount Horeb, a distance of about 400 miles. We talk about a long distance runner. <laughs> and what did he do when he got down there? He hid in a cave. And as he slept in that cave, the word of the Lord came to him and told him to go forth and stand on the mountain before the Lord. Behold, the Lord was passing by. This was the very same mountain where the Lord passed by Moses. So in 1 Kings, if you want to turn with me just a couple of verses. 1 Kings chapter 19. We begin at the 11th verse. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 11. So he said, he being capitalized, God speaking, go forth and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord was passing by, and a great and strong wind was rending the mountains and breaking in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of a gentle blowing. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. With the whisper, came the glory of God. And Elijah had to cover his face as he entered in to the Lord's presence. At the end of his life, as we read in our Old Testament lesson this morning, Elijah was taken up bodily into heaven in a chariot of fire pulled by horses of fire, carried away in a whirlwind. And Elijah was ushered into the glorious presence of God. There's one thing I have come to know about Scripture. One thing I've come to know about the ways of God. There are no coincidences. It's no coincidence that both Moses and Elijah entered into the very presence of God. 
that God passed by them both with his glory. On that same mountain, some 600 years apart. There's another mountain in northern Israel, Mount Tabor. Mount Tabor is the traditional site of the transfiguration of Jesus. But I want us to go to the northernmost point of Israel, to the highest point in all of Israel, rising over 9,000 feet above sea level to Mount Hermon. You see, Jesus and his disciples are at Caesarea Philippi. Caesarea Philippi, they, it's right at the base, right at the foot of Mount Hermon. And as we read in our gospel lesson this morning, that six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain. Now, if you look at a map of Israel, Mount Tabor is to the southwest of the Sea of Galilee. To go from Caesarea to Philippi in the northernmost part to Mount Tabor is too great of a distance to walk in six days. So I believe that it would have taken them that amount of time to ascend at six days to ascend Mount Hermon. And what happened there? Jesus' face shone like the sun. His garments became white as light. And while Peter was speaking, a bright cloud just overshadowed them. Behold, the voice out of the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. He had taken Peter, James, and John, that inner circle of disciples. And who should join them on this mountain? Moses and Elijah. Two who knew firsthand the glory of God. And there they are, speaking with Jesus. How, how significant, how, how magnificent that those two who stood in the, his glorious presence centuries earlier Moses who allowed God to place him in that, that cleft in that rock cover him with his hand and then to remove his hand to reveal his glory and Elijah who, who covered his face with his cloak on the mountain of God but was ushered into his glorious presence in a whirlwind, who should stand in, in the glorious presence, both of them now in the very presence of the Son of God. Some 875 years later, after Elijah. What a sight! What, what an experience! For Peter, James, and John. No wonder Peter wanted to, to build three shelters, three tents, three tabernacles, it's called. That's what a tabernacle is, a tent. He wanted to build something there for the three of them. You see, Peter was still caught up in the presence of God and, 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 and the the glory of God in a cloud. And yes, they, the three of them, will see Jesus ascend into heaven in a cloud. And we will see Jesus come for us, ah, 
in a cloud. But on that particular day, on that mountain, in that cloud, they saw the blinding brightness of Jesus. They saw the very presence of God. Peter and James and John would come to understand the presence of God no longer being in the temple as of old. They will see darkness cover the land. It's the very Son of God hung on a cross. They will come to understand the significance of the, the tearing in two of the veil from top to bottom in the temple. That the glory of God is no longer there. They will come to experience that glory in a brand new way. As the very glory and presence of God is poured out upon them at Pentecost. And they will know now the glory and presence of God with them every day of their lives. May we know of that cloud of glory within us today. We thank you, Lord, for your presence and just the witness of your presence in so, such a dramatic and, and, and glorious way. We thank you that your presence eventually has come to live in us. Use us so that people can see your glory in our lives. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand as we continue to worship.
gathered on the first day of the week, but they're your presence with us all week long, every day, every hour of every day. And Lord, we thank you for you for not only being with us but providing for us. And we we rejoice this morning in having Vivian with us. And we continue to pray for her, uh, for her healing, Lord, and for your touch upon her. We pray for Elena as she's not well this morning, that uh, you would touch her and strengthen her. And for Jessica Ron, Lord, just uh, just the, the rash that she has, and, and Lord, the, 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 uh, the, the painful, the irritating uh, process that she's going through right now. We just pray for wisdom for doctors, for your touch upon her. We continue to pray for Emily, for John, for Ron Castro, for Lou, Carolyn, Lynn. Pray for Jean Massingale, Lord, and the healing of her arm. For Samantha and Dobby and Bobby, Lord, that uh, you would bring healing to them. And Lord, this morning I just uh, I lift up my sister Karen. Lord, I just ask that you would you would just touch her and, and just relieve her of the pain that she's experiencing. Lord, as as cancer is taking uh, charge of her body. Lord, just bring peace to her and, and just comfort and peace to, to her girls and, and their families. All of these things we lift before your throne of grace. We thank you that we can come before you knowing that you hear us and that you want us to bring these petitions. We thank you for the prayer that you've given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory,